Well, this is our first interview for uh, PDAC 2023 on our Morning Drive conference series. And joining me right now is the President, CEO, and Director, Ross McEnroy. Thank How you. are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How was your flight? It was good. Uh, came from Fort Lauderdale in Florida. Uh, it's coming off of a, the BMO conference, and I think our plane was probably 75% full of uh, attendees that, that are just coming back to this part of the world. So uh, if people aren't familiar, this is, uh, we just, well, we just picked Ross up from the airport and now you're going to PDAC. You're coming in early though. That's right. So you've got a lot of things lined up. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm attending another conference as well. The uh, Red Cloud um, uh, investment uh, conference, they call it the pre-PDAC. Right. Um, and there's, you know, the, the, I guess part of the uranium session, or at least the part that I'm in, is tomorrow and again um, present fairly early in the morning and uh, have a lot of meetings scheduled all day long so it's it's going to be busy and then then of course yeah, PDAC. PDAC yeah so you were so busy that the only way we can get you for an interview was to pick you up from the airport <laughs> appreciate it it's great awesome okay so you know what for for our uh, community and potential new shareholders that might not be familiar with the company why don't we start right off with management and why you're the right guy to lead the helm here you got 35 years of experience but i'll let you do a you know. Sure. Yeah. I mean, my, my background, I'm a geologist. Um, I started off, I guess, my career in the Athabasca Basin looking for uranium. I worked for the predecessor of Cameco, which was the Saskatchewan government at the time in the mid 80s. Um, had, you know, spent a number of years w with them. I was pretty successful or at least been on some, you know, great successful projects, including MacArthur River, which is still to this day the the biggest high-grade uranium deposit of all. So it was a, it was a really good training ground, and um, you know, and that that kept me in the in the business for in the uranium sector for quite a while. I went to work with BHP and gold and diamonds for about 14 years, and came back to uranium in the early 2000s when there was a you know the the last uranium bull market. Um, right. And. Uh, you know, we uh, started with a company called Fission Energy, which has uh, just spun out in 2007. So I was right there at the beginning, and you know, it's it's all it was all about exploring in the Athabasca Basin again. And uh, we were very successful there. Made a discovery, sold it, spun out Fission Uranium, which is the current uh, company. So it's a little bit of a background. Who else is uh, on the management team? Do you have sort of uh, to your right and to your left that you can you can rely on that you know we should talk about? Right. Well, you know, so we've evolved from being I guess you'd call us a, a, a an explorer, a junior explorer, into a, a developer, which means we you know are moving along the economic and and the permitting um, side of, of the equation. So about what would it be two years ago now we brought on a. a some mine engineering uh, horsepower and uh, was fortunate enough to be able to work with Gary Haywood who's now our vice president of, um, of project development. He's a you know, well-seasoned mine engineer, uh, a lot of experience with, with the, the high-grade uranium deposits in the Athabasca Basin hadn't, having previously been the superintendent of MacArthur River and so I think that's you know one aspect of it. The other one is is really building up the team on on the permitting side because that's a you know it's a huge part of our efforts going forward is making sure that this project is environmentally sound. We know the um, you know all the, the government uh, you know pathway to, to get to um, production. So we you know, with Mark Wittrup now as our senior. Uh, consultant on the permitting and regulatory side. You know, there's probably nobody more experienced in this business than than Mark. He's seen it before. He's put other uranium mines into production. We have a brand new uh, in-house um, hire with uh, with Jeff Prez Preznik. Um, he's the environmental uh, manager now for the company, and and I'd say that you know that and uh, community relations expertise that right. um, you know those are all the, the ne necessary components for moving a project forward so how would you say the company's changed over the last two years sure well that's uh, I mean that that evolution to go right from Explorer to uh, a developer and you know with an eye on the goal of being a you know a, produ a production a, an operating mine I think that's been a huge transition so 
you know, we're much better capitalized right now. We're, you know, have moved our project through the feasibility study. So, I mean, there's just been some major, major milestones that, you know, that are going along the way. But I, I think that um, the whole sector is so much better now. Uh, it really came to life in the fall of 2020. And um, I think we're in the early stages of a very long, you know, bull run in the, in the, uh, in the nuclear sector. So the macro story's changed over the last two years. Our own story continues to um, advance, and as I say, you know, we're working with a tier one asset uh, in a tier one jurisdiction. Let's talk about sentiment there. You did mention it, you touched on it. How have you seen it change over the last two, three years? Well, I think it, you know, it came to life, some, you know, um, you know, they, there'd been an appreciation for, um, you know, climate change, right? People, the, the general public seems to understand that, that climate change is a real thing and uh, and what are the effects of it and how do we um, still power our world and yet uh, do so in a, you know, a, a, a low carbon uh, method. And, and I think that, you know, nuclear is such an important key part and it's now generally accepted globally that, that this, you know, the nuclear sector is, is absolutely fundamental as we, you know, approach the electrification of everything, um, you know, we plug everything in, we're, uh, people are starting to drive electric vehicles, that's only getting more and more, uh, you know, uh, prevalent in, in every aspect of, of um, you know, our, our society, but I think that, you um, you know, the appreciation that, that nuclear is, is, there's really no path to zero carbon without going through nuclear. That's been accepted globally. Uh, you know, we've seen the European Union uh, rate uranium as, um, you know, a green energy, right? And it's just, these sort of changes are just working their way through society yeah. everywhere. And that's, that's really what underpins the strength. You want to update us sort of where you're at with the, the PLS project? Sure, Ken. We um, completed our feasibility study, so the last major, you know, economic hurdle, um, and that was done in uh, in January this year. So really, it's about a month month ago that we announced the results of, of the feasibility study. Uh, very, very impressive. It shows a, a, a robust project. The economics are are solid. We're looking at a ten-year mine life, and I think importantly it's highlighted that this will be a very low uh, cash cost producer so that gives you know a lot of leverage a lot of um, you know flexibility in, in, in how we can go and i think there's a continuation of you know focus on north american assets as as being the highest priority but anyway so we completed feasibility in january and that sort of gets us ready and prepped for the on on the regulatory side going into an environmental impact uh, assessment phase of which we'll be filing in the latter part of, of this calendar year. And that is really the, the review process where, you know, upon exiting, you will have licenses to be able to build and operate a mine. Uh, do you think that this could be in production uh, by 2029, 2030? Yeah, I think, I think so. I mean, my most optimistic projection here is that by sometime early 2028 this could be a producer there are my, my baseline uh, timeline you know if the regulatory part takes a little bit longer maybe 2029 so I'd say you know before the end of this this uh, this decades out will be a, a producing asset um, so where would this project rank globally well, it's, it's big, it's huge. You know, we're looking at production of um, just over 9 million pounds a year. With a 10-year uh, lifespan. With a 10-year lifespan and a lot of room to grow. You know, the deposit's by no means drilled off. In fact, there's, there's high-grade parts of it, significant high-grade parts of it that are not even yet in the mine plan that we can convert that over. So we're, right. I think, um, realistically, you know, it, it's not too difficult to see a 14 or 15-year mine life and then who knows I mean there's plenty of exploration potential there um, but where does that rank you know the it, it'll put us in the probably the well I mean the top 10 
uh, production stories, you know, mm -hmm. worldwide for right. sure. Um, you know, that'll be roughly at nine million pounds. You know, you're roughly five percent of the you know the uh, global uh, consumption of, of nuclear power per year. So. My long-term goal is really the project level. I want to. I know that this project will be a production story. So we're doing everything that you know, all the steps necessary to take it from where it's at uh, to get it to the the line, the finish line of being a, a, a project that can go into production. If it, you know, by the time I get to the finish line, I mean, uh, we'll probably cross that. We, you know, we may become a miner. Um, uh, we, I mean, there are, there's always the, the possibility of consolidation in the area, mergers and acquisitions, you know, uh, uh, bringing in strategic partners, um, you know, and then, of course, we'd be open to whatever avenue that, that makes sense. But I, I, you know, my goal is really to get the project to the stage that it will be a producer. And if, you know, if it's Fission uh, Uranium Mining Corp, yeah. um, then that, that's what we'll be. You've kind of been down that process before, right, with other, uh, with other things. Yeah, I have. I mean, uh, I've been on, you know, a number of projects from early grassroots discovery through development, I've uh, worked in operating mines, uh, you know, so I've, I've seen the the gamut, so I have a pretty good idea what it takes to, to get there, and this is certainly a project that'll get there, and you know what, it's really all about, at this point, having the, hiring the right team, it's it's the people behind it that, that make sure that this project, you know, the process goes forward with as, you know, minimal um, obstacles as possible, because the, the deposit itself is sound, right, it's it's really about uh, you know the, the team behind it moving it forward. When it comes to M and A, when we start talking about that stuff, that's that, that's where it's a lot of fun. Uh, people can speculate. Uh, last time I checked, the, the spot price of uranium was sitting in and around fifty bucks, which yeah. you know two years ago I think it was somewhere around thirty five or whatever. Yeah. So I, I'm sure if you adjust that to inflation, we're not that far above thirty five. Um, what ending would you say this is in? If we're at the early, uh, you know, endings of a bull market, right? What, what ending do you think we're in? Oh, inning one, maybe. Inning one. I think we've barely started. You know, the I think if you look at um, we call it the incentive price to spur on new development, new production worldwide. It globally speaking, you're talking north uh, uranium prices having to be north of ninety dollars. Right. Um, I even recently listened to a panel um, where they were. You know, their uh, incentive price was $125 a pound. I, I don't know. I mean, I, it, it used high. to be 70 Now it's 90 is the new norm. And, uh, right. and, you know, I don't know if 125 is a little aggressive, but I think 90 is a very easy call, you know, globally speaking. Um, we're, you know, on our project, we're, you know, uh, very economically viable at current uranium prices, so you know I'll take 90 any day. <laughs> of you know, course, if it works at 50, a lot of if it works at 60, it, it's really going to work at 90. Yeah, I didn't mean to cut you off there, but it just I just think of one word: leverage. Exactly. Right. Um, so, what can we expect from the company over the next 12 12 months? I mean, if I'm again, we're trying to you know potential new shareholders here, someone that might take a new position. What can they look for? What's the company going to do? Well, I think there's a couple of things. You know, I think the, the shareholders obviously need to get, I, I encourage everybody to take a look at the nuclear sector anyways, and, and, you know, just maybe, you know, get a position somewhere along the way, you know, in the nuclear, whether you like exploration stories, development stories, mining stories. I mean, this is a sector that's not going away. So it's, I think it's, it should attract investors' attention um, one way or the other. And, you know, uh, for us, it's uh, you'll see news news flow on the uh, a lot on the on the permitting side. You know where what stage we're at, um, but I think you know equally important too is is our relationships with our uh, northern indigenous um, partners in the in the area, and uh, you, you will continue to make announcements as we progress. You know with um, with support that we're gaining at the local level, so. I think you know a lot of this is de-risking the project, and so the right. news flow will be, uh, you know, outlining where it's at, you know, uh, what other risks have been taken off the table as, as we continue to move forward. 
Um, so, you know, really that's the kind of news flow. Um, we may possibly, we don't have the budget yet uh, at this stage, but we, you know, and with the uranium sector being as healthy and as encouraging as it is, you know, it's, it's likely that we'll start looking at some exploration uh, again, you know, throughout this year. We have a very large property, uh, 31,000 hectares, which is a, a big chunk of area. Some, you know, just chocker block full of, uh, of high priority targets um, that we'll, you know, want to test. Uh, we've staked some new ground now in the in the western side of the, the basin too. So we have another project that um, would be a very early stage, but I think has good potential for for discovery of, of high grade uranium. So. You know, I think look to us uh, advancing the the project and, and announcing, you know, keeping the new flow out there just, uh, on where what stage we're at in, in the project advancement, but also possibly on the exploration front as well. So you know, we'll be able to cover a lot of different bases this year. Going to all these different conferences um, and, and having meetings with institutional people, high net worth people, retail people. What would you say is the number one? Uh, question that investors have uh, in, in regards to your company on you know what what's the one concern that people have across the board um, I think the you know what people want to see projects go forward and so I think jurisdictional risk is seems to be on the on the mind of most of the you know the higher net worth um, people and, and larger institutions well they know that there's a, a minimal amount of of uh, of risk, their jurisdictional risk involved with our project, because we're Saskatchewan, generally, you know, considered the number one or two mining jurisdictions in the world. Um, it's maybe just the timelines, right, through the through the regulatory side. It's not that you, um, whether you can get through it or not, you know you can. Um, it's, you know, the fact that it takes a couple of years to, to do it. I mean, it's not, uh, you know, some countries... Uh, around the world in Africa, you can get a permit almost overnight. You know, right. you apply and, and you're there. Well, that's not how it works It works in, in, in Canada. So um, I don't know that there's so much concern. I think, uh, you know, people are, you know, rightly so. I mean, if any concern, it would be, do we have the, the team to be able to move this project forward? And, uh, you know, and I can assure everybody that we do, in fact, have the goods and we have the team to to deliver and that's really what a lot of my messaging is, is about you know I'm no longer convincing people that the nuclear sector is here to stay I think uh, yeah. you know most of the people are seem to recognize that but you know for a while in the you know few years ago that's really all it was you were trying to convince everybody that you know yeah. Nuclear should have a place in, <laughs> in the world well it, it does yeah you don't have to do that you don't have to do that part anymore well, I think we're uh, approaching your destination here. Um, it should be on our right-hand side. It, I, this is the the, uh, the convention center. Um, so, what's the what message would you like to leave investors with? How do we want? How do you want to leave this off? Well, I want uh, investors, like I say, to stay focused on the uranium sector. I think you should absolutely uh, Get keep somewhere. uranium somewhere. It should be part of your portfolio. Look towards management that you feel you can trust and and tier one projects, tier one jurisdictions, there's not that many of them, so there, there's a few, but um, you know, I really do encourage people to, to have a look and, and uh, take a look at Fission Uranium, and uh, you know, we'll be happy to, um, you know, to, to have new shareholders at all times, and, uh, and uh, you know, we're out meeting with, with people on a very regular basis, so you know, catch us at the, uh, at the conference at, at PDAC, and we'll see you there. Awesome. We're going to leave it there, and uh, thank you very much. Good. Thank you very much. That was a fantastic interview.